Hello everyone, I'm back with a new video and today we'll discuss about difference between jam, jelly and marmalade. So in this particular video, I'll be discussing about the jam, uh, its processing and what can be the problems that, can, uh, that we can face during preparation of a jam. So what is jam? Jam is a product made by boiling fruit pulp with sufficient sugar to a reasonably thick consistency. Uh, firm enough to hold the fruit tissues in position so jam can be prepared from any fruit uh, such as apple pear chiku apricot lookout peach papaya carrot plum strawberry raspberry mango tomato uh, grapes and musk melon so you can try uh, preparing jam from any of these and it can be prepared from one kind of a fruit or from two or more kinds of commercial uh, two or more kinds. So the commercial jams such as tutti frutti can be prepared from uh, pieces of the fruit or fruit scrapping. All right. So jam contains about 0.5 to 0.6% of acid and invert sugar should not be more than 40%. So this is the basic of the preparation of jam. 0.5 to 0.6% of the acid and not more than 40% of invert sugar. So let's begin with the preparation of the jam. So I've prepared a flow chart for the preparation. First of all, we'll take a ripe, firm fruit. Not so ripe, not so underripe. Ripe but firm fruit. We'll wash it to remove the dust. Then we'll peel the fruit. Next is pulping. We'll remove the pulp. Uh, we'll separate the pulp from the seed. If suppose it is a apple or apricot or lookout or peach, so you need to remove the seeds from within the uh, fruit and separate the pulp. Then we'll boil the pulp with continuous stirring. After boiling, addition of citric acid will add citric acid. I've already mentioned how much 0.5 to 0.6% of the acid is appropriate for jam um, production. Now, uh, whether the jam is prepared or not, we'll check it by uh, further cooking up to 105 degrees Celsius or by 68% TSS. So either you cook it for 105 degrees Celsius or uh, check its uh, TSS using a refractometer. So TSS should not be more than 68% or by a sheet test. So I'll be explaining what is sheet test later on. Then what we'll do is fill the hot uh, jam into the sterilized bottles. Then let the bottles cool and then we'll cap the bottles and finally we'll store it. Okay, so now let me explain what is sheeting, the sheet test. What you'll do is, a small portion of a jam is taken out during the boiling in a spoon or uh, uh, any spatula you can take. It is then allowed to drop. If the product falls off in the form of a sheet or flakes instead of flowing in a continuous stream or syrup, it means that the end point has been reached and the product is ready. Otherwise, boiling is continued till the sheet test is positive. Okay, so now we'll discuss about the problems in a jam production. So first problem that we can face is the crystallization. So what happens is the final product should remain, uh, sorry, should contain 30 to 50 percent of in invert sugar. If the percentage is less than 30, cane sugar may crystallize. And if it is more than 50, the jam will become honey-like mask due to the formation of small crystals of glucose. So we can avoid this by adding corn syrup or glucose along with the cane, uh, cane sugar so that uh, the jam shouldn't crystallize. The next problem that we can face is sticky or gummy jam. Because of the high percentage of total soluble solids, that is a TSS, jams tend to become gummy or sticky. Right. So this problem can be solved by adding uh, adding uh, pectin or citric acid or both to increase the TSS. The third problem that we can face is premature setting. So what happens is okay, due to the low to uh, total soluble solids and high pectin content, the jam 
the next problem that we can face is premature setting this is due to the low total soluble solids and high pectin content in the jam and can be prevented by adding more sugar so if this cannot be done a small quantity of sodium bicarbonate can also be added to reduce the acidity and thus prevent pre coagulation all right so next thing that we can face is surface graining or shrinkage surface graining se matlab kya hai ki chote chote grains ban jana right so what happens is this is caused by evaporation of uh, moisture during the storage of a jam so storing in a cool place can reduce this the last problem that we can face and that we all know is microbial spoilage so uh, sometimes molds may spoil the jam during storage but they are destroyed if exposed to less than 90% of humidity hence jam should be stored at 80% humidity and mold growth can also be prevented by not sealing the filled jar and covering the surface of the jam with a disc of waxed paper because mold does not grow under open conditions as rapidly as in the closed space so it is also advisable to add 40 ppm sulfur dioxide in the form of kms in case of can sulfur dioxide uh, should not be added to the jam as it causes blackening of the internal surface of the can and yeast are not a serious problems due to the high concentration of sugar so this is all i have to tell you about the jam production and problems that we can face and lastly i have some of the fpo specifications particularly for jam which are important and which are very important uh, with the competitive point of view total soluble solids in jam is 68% whereas fruit part is 45% learn it put it inside your brain this is very important it comes again and again in your exams and it is asked in your semestral exams also this is one of the important question total soluble solids is 68% and fruit part is 45% that's it for today we'll continue in the next video with the jelly and marmalade preparation so if you like my videos please like share and subscribe and follow me for the next video